Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Dead on Dave. You might know who I am, but you may not know why I'm here or why you're here. This is Trash or Treasure. This is a channel that I've tried to get started before, but now I have a new idea of how I want to go about things. You see, I've started a business, a small business, online retail. I buy, sell, pick, flip, barter, whatever. I don't care. If you got something I think is cool and I either have the money to buy it from you or something really cool to trade, I'm going to do it and then I'm going to move it on and find its forever home. It's what I like to do. It's a passion of mine since I was a kid. When I was a young Polish Dave just trash picking in, in Las Vegas with my uncle. You know, I've always enjoyed doing it and I love finding things uh, their home and I love finding out new items and the history behind them. So what I want to do, the thing that I wanted to do on this channel specifically was take you on that journey. Now, right now with COVID, it's a little bit hard to film in locations as far as, you know, thrift shops, savers, uh, Goodwills, all that. People aren't really digging on it too much. So I'm trying not to be too invasive as I'm doing all of this. But what I want to do essentially is... Every time I buy something, I want to do a video just reacting to it, showing you the item, giving you my initial reaction, because I don't always uh, research things in the places that I'm at. Part of the fun for me is just trying to see if I know what can sell. I try to give myself at least one or two challenge items every time I pick, every time I go somewhere. Something that you buy out of the norm. Don't research it. Learn your lessons a different way. And these are things that I'm trying to do. And these are things you're going to learn about me throughout the course of this journey that we're venturing together. So with all that said, let's start. It's real simple. We're going to start with the items that I picked yesterday. I'm going to give you my initial reactions and then we'll go forth and we'll uh, do some research on them as well. All right. You ready? Here we go. So the two places that I picked yesterday were Savers and Goodwill. And they were on the Berlin Turnpike here in uh, New Britain, Connecticut. And they were really close to each other, so that was the best way to go. I found a ride so I didn't have to Uber or take a bus or anything like that, which is all net profit. Woo, I don't have to spend money on those things. <laughs> Remember, I don't drive. I am on a cane. I, I got hurt in the military. I'm medically retired, blah, blah, blah. Again, these are all details. If you don't already know about me, we will discover them throughout this journey. But that's all neither here nor there. Let's start with what I got. I paid about $20 total for everything. We'll go over the receipts as well uh, to really just pinpoint exactly what we spent. So uh, some of the items that I got, you might find a little bit weird. I go all over the eclectic scale and sometimes I will buy things out of season. Now I saw these at the Savers and I had to get them. They're just really, really neat. There's three different figurines and I do have all three, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we got a wizard. Uh, a scarecrow and a witch. I do have all three figurines. They're porcelain. They're in great condition. I want to say they're a little older. I'm not exactly sure how old. The design of the pumpkins definitely uh, speak to a, a, a older 40s, 50s. You'll see a lot more of the grotesque pumpkins on advertising a little bit earlier on. Um, so that's kind of a good sign. I don't think they're that old, obviously. I The box kind of gives it away of where it is. 70s, 80s is kind of where I feel um, the, the Halloween design here kind of also gives it away. They went to the font of the movie for the most part, which kind of, again, because it has that look, because it has the Halloween it automatically reminded me of the movie, which it has no tie-in at all as far as I know. I can't find anything on it. Again, this is just an example of something that I think is cool. I got each one for a buck. I feel like the set should be worth 10 to 15 Should be. Maybe even a little bit more. I haven't looked them up yet, and I got a feeling they're going to be kind of difficult to find without any type of maker. They're pencil-style Halloween porcelain figurines. A witch a scarecrow, and a wizard. And I really like them. I think they're pretty cool. I think I'll get 15, maybe as much as 20. They're in really great condition. They're not chalk pieces, which a lot of these end up being. These are porcelain. They're really nice. Porcelain always sells. That's one thing I know about uh, as far as knickknacks go. If you're going to get you know ceramic things you know, from Hallmark, you're going to find out a lot that they're not going to hold their value. Porcelain figurines, especially when they have a little bit of age, they will. So at least from what I, I, I've been able to sell a lot of these 70s, 80s type small box things. Smalls have been my lifeblood. Uh, but like this glass or crystal, really crystal bells and things, people are still buying them, especially if they still have the leaded 24% and all that. And porcelain is in that same type of category as far as what people are still looking for. So I really like these and um, I don't think the hardest research in the world, but 15 to 20, I think as is, is somewhere where I'll be. And I will take 10 for them as the set if I need to. 
But if I hold on to these to next Halloween, who knows what I'll get for them. So that's the thought process. What do you guys think of the three Halloween figurines? Next up, we've got uh, these these two little cases I found. They got eyes on them. I thought they were cute. You know, they, I got them for two bucks a piece, so I paid four for the pair. I just thought they were neat. You know, they three ring. They're for the binders, you know, kids' school, uh, and all kinds of other things. I also think with, you know, Corona and... Uh, limiting of school. I think these are going to be nostalgic items as soon as people can start getting back to some sort of normalcy. Or even if they don't, people will want these type of things just to kind of remind them of what we didn't, what we don't have anymore. Kind of sad and morose. I will admit to that. But collecting has many different facets and you got to be able to at least understand all of them if you want to be able to make a buck in this industry. I just think they're pretty neat. The eyes, I mean, doesn't five maybe five bucks i don't know i i just kind of got them because i thought they were cool so they were just kind of <laughs> what <laughs> why why <laughs> Is this a thing? What? What would you buy me? I think you would put your pencils in my face. <laughs> All right, they're actually pretty cool. Easy five bucks a piece, maybe as much as ten. I gotta look them up and see what they actually sell for. These are grill. Oh, I should have read right there. They're called grills. <laughs> Why didn't I notice that before? Put a smile on your case. Why didn't I recognize that? I had no clue. Well, you know, I bought them because I just thought they were kind of cool little bags. Honestly, when I first saw it, I thought they were just, it was a purse. I didn't really even think they were like a school bag or a pencil bag. But somebody's going to want these probably as the pair. 10 to 15 bucks if I had to guess. That's before we actually look what they're going for. These are great. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, this one was an easy one for me. Uh, anything new in box, I'm kind of buying right now. If I see it for under three bucks and it's new in box, I'm going to pretty much buy it, especially when it's toys, especially when it's educational toys. And even more so when they're specifically scientific toys. They're really hot right now. Kids are loving them. Parents are trying to get their kids as many of these as possible. This is a really cool one. This is, uh, and this is pretty, pretty much speaks for itself. It's a uh, radio boombox, so the, you, your kid can make a paper boombox, old school. So there's nostalgia between the parent and the kid because they get to make something that we used to listen to, which is really cool. And it works, and so you're really making an FM radio out of paper. There's a speaker. It's a really cool little set. I found it for two bucks, brand new, in box sealed. You got to pick this up. I feel it should go for 10 15 maybe a little bit more. Uh, but I don't know. I got to look and actually see what it is worth, which again, I haven't done yet. I want it for these videos for the sake of, you know, making this content and kind of really taking you through the process. I don't want to research a lot of these items before I show you them here. So that's an example of this. And I really do enjoy this. Uh, this is cool. It's a radio boombox. It should be a pretty easy sell. So we'll get that up and it should be gone 10, 15 bucks. So I'm expecting somewhere in that realm. What do you guys think? Easy one. Don't need to say too much more. Just cool. All right. Now, this is the piece that I think I'm most excited about, uh, at least for its potential value. Maybe not right at the moment, but I think the longer things like this sit, the better, the long, the more it's going to be worth. Um, maybe you don't know what this is. Right off the top of the your, your face, you might not know what this is. Just a clown, scary kid's cup. And maybe that's all it is. Sure. We look at the side, and this is what got me to get it right there. Greatest show on earth, which means this is now a relic. You see, this is Barnum & Bailey's. This is Ringling Brothers. This is uh, the Traveling Circus, which if you didn't know, even before Corona, they don't do these anymore. Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey, they're gone. They're done. They don't travel. There are no more traveling circuses left. Arguably, the only one that's left is wrestling, and they don't travel anymore either because of Corona. But this stuff stopped before Corona. And uh, more than likely, the circus is never coming back. But we're not going to get into all the reasons of why the circus died. We're going to get into why these things are collectible. Now, this is from 2001, so it doesn't have a whole lot of age. 
but it is already 20 years old. So, and to get it for a dollar, I think a dollar or two is what I paid for it. You got to at least pick it up. Circus stuff is getting hot now. It's only been a few years since the circus has died and people are already getting nostalgia and it's getting harder to find circus related items already. People really knew it was coming. The, the collectible market has always been hot for circus stuff, especially vintage older stuff. Maybe not the newer things, but when a cataclysm, when a big shift with a, a major shift in the industry happens, like the closing of the traveling circus, it's going to bring some value. So I don't know what this is selling for currently. If I had to guess, because it is, you know, the greatest show on earth, it's kind of everything you want. It's an iconic look. It's a clown. It, it kind of even looks like a Ringling Brothers piece. Well, because it is. But that's the cool thing about it. It's recognizable. Once you start thinking in the terms, it's very recognizable. And I think it... It's borderline iconic. Um, so right now, if I had to guess, this is selling for about 20 bucks. 20 to 25 dollars if I had to guess. 15 to 25 is the range that I would think that it's selling for currently. But I think as time goes on, it's gonna be the smalls plastic in the last 25 to 30 years that will increase a little bit more in value. And I think eventually this could be a 50 to 60 dollar cup. I really do. It's just got everything going for it. You know, um, it's it, it's got the kid look, but of course this isn't. It's got a good size. It, it's good. It's just a good cup. And maybe I'm 100% off on this one, but I like it. And I think it's the best thing that I bought aside from the last piece. But for the last piece, we got to travel. One moment, please. This is my final piece that I got yesterday. It's a painting. I don't do a lot of art. Now, this caught my eye. It, for one, it wasn't sitting with all the other frames. This was moved off to the side. Uh, I think by the Goodwill that was stocking it. So to me, it jumped out that it might be something a little special. I don't think this is anything super rare. I think it's a reprint. It's a litho if I had to guess, but it's just got the right look. I love it. It looks, it, it looks uh, obviously Mexican to me, I would think. Definitely something Southern. We got a lot of the Southern stuff that you're going to see. Cactuses, sun, very indicative, big horn cows. West, South, Southwest type vibe all day long. And it's just a really nice piece. It's well framed. Somebody had it professionally framed. Uh, there is some, now it's it's here where there's some separation. It kind of makes me think that it might not be a lithograph just because it almost looks like it is paper. I don't know. So I want to take this out of the frame, but I'm a little afraid to do it because someone did professionally frame it in the back and it's got the, uh, the crate paper that somebody started to take off, but I really like it. I got it for eight bucks. As is, without any research, I think it's a $25, $30 painting. But I, something is telling me there might be some more value to this. It's just really well done. And just the way that it hangs, something about it looks really cool. It might not be anything, but this is kind of my wild card of the day. And probably the piece I'm most excited about outside of the uh, the circus cup. What do you guys think of this one? I really, I dig it. So there you go. There you have it. There's everything. That's all the items that we got. Uh, so what are we, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items, about 20 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's that's exactly where you want to be in that two to three dollar an item price range, right where you want to be. That's a really nice price point for most items. I think we'll do well on these. Uh, Ten to fifteen dollars an item very easily, possibly a little bit more with the uh, the painting and the cup. We'll see what these bring, and we'll do some research into them, and we'll uh, show you what the things actually are and what they're actually going for, and then we'll take it to the next step. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Part one of our first ever video here on the new Trasher Treasure, where we buy, we sell, we pick, we flip. Check us out everywhere. Trasher Treasure New Britain on Facebook. Trash Treasure NB on the Twitter. And it's about to be everywhere else. Go check us out. All the links are in the description box. If you want to see everything that we have for sale right now, on Facebook, go check out the links that are below. The third link, you're gonna find it. It's going to give you the entire commerce profile. Go ahead, buy some stuff. Next mush puff that buys an item from Dead on Dave on Facebook through Trash or Treasure will get this Jirachi Awesome Rare. I pulled two the other day on stream and I'm giving one away to you. This will be in the next 
item that gets sold to a mush buff. You better prove to me you're a mush buff or you don't get the Jirachi. So go check out everything. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Tell me what, you, what your favorite item that we picked was. Go ahead and let me know what you think we'll end up selling everything for. And uh, mainly, do you think that we got anything good today? I want to know what you think. Keep the conversation going. Like, subscribe, share. Let's blow it up. Trash a treasure for you. Trash a treasure for me. Trash a treasure for all. Bye-bye.